the object oriented programming methodology a methodology in which we follow bottom up approach a programming methodology in which we follow bottom up approach is nothing but your object oriented programming methodology bottom up approach in the sense whenever we get a problem whenever we get a problem we look at the problem from the bottom angle from the bottom like i get a, for example i get a uh, problem saying that i need the solution for my educational organization now i look at the problem from the bottom in the sense i see who are the users who are going to use it then i find out the users so user of educational organization could be a trainee a trainer admin and so on so what what i did i looked at the problem from the far far end. then i move up now i will see what a trainee can do trainee can take a course trainee can write the exam trainee can view results so in the same way trainer what a trainer can do trainer can set the exam trainer can view results what an admin can do admin can create trainee can create trainer and so on so see that we are in this program methodology we are very much interested in who is doing the task then what is the task we first found out that who are the users then we are looking into the problem that what is a user can do what is a trainee can do so here we can see that we are moving towards the solution from bottom to the top then we say that it is a bottom up approach in our object oriented programming programming methodology in our object oriented programming methodology what is an object what is an object so an object can be anything anything what you see across you is an object for example this pen pen is an object uh, this board is an object uh, a computer is an object a laptop is an object a human being is an object myself i am an object so an object can be anything it can be a living thing or a non living thing so anything you see across you is an object now let us take this pen this pen is an object now what has this pen got so every object every object will have two things one is state and other is behavior now what is state state is something which defines the look and feel of the object now i can say that Uh, the length length of this pen comes under state a width of this pen color of this pen and yeah uh, you can say that brand brand comes under the state even you can uh, say price price of this pen price per unit this comes under the state so everything which defines the look and feel of an object comes under the state now behavior what can i do with this pen what a pen can do what can i do with this pen comes under the behavior i can use this pen to write to draw something is it not to write to draw something and i can do many things with this pen so all these things come under behavior now you take a human being you take a person now what does uh, uh, come under the state uh, the height of a person color of a person hair color his age his name his qualification and so on all these things comes under state a behavior what is the behavior of a human being behavior of a human being is nothing but uh, walking reading running watching learning and many things all these things comes under behavior 
Now, uh, let us move towards a real time scenario. Uh, uh, let us take a bank account. Say bank account. Bank account of a customer. So customer is an object. Now, if say for example, I got an application, I need to develop an application for banking. So I can identify the object first. So what is an object? Customer is an object. Now tell me what are the states? Now what could be the state of a customer? Yes, customer ID. Now a customer of bank. So definitely they will have account number. They will have a name, address, balance, so on. So all these things comes under the state. So the state of a customer, what does uh, state of a customer means? The customer ID, account number, name, address, balance, so on. Now behavior. So what can a customer do? A customer can deposit the amount. A customer can withdraw the amount. A customer can have balance inquiry. A customer can transfer the amount. So all these things comes under the behavior. So yeah, this makes an object. The states of an object is called as attribute. And the behaviors are called as methods. Now, if I take a customer, say Jack. Jack is a customer. Jack will have customer ID, account number, name, address, balance, and so on. Another customer, say Peter. Peter will have all these things. Now, if I make a sentence, this is a blueprint of a customer. Is it not? This is the blueprint. This gives a blueprint of a customer. Yeah. So, this is a blueprint of an object. So a blueprint of an object is called as class. Blueprint of an object is called as class. So what is class? So now I can give a definition for a class. Class is a blueprint of an object. Or I can say class is a collection of set of attributes and behaviors. So this is class. Now what is object? I can say object is an instance of a class. Is it not? I have Jack, Peter is an object, Lily is an object, Jack, Peter, Lily, they are the instance of this class or so these are called as object. Now say for example uh, you might be having your account uh, for a bank. Now see Jack is an object. Now can I give Jack a direct access to customer ID, can Jack edit customer ID, can Jack change the account number, can Jack directly update the balance, no. So Jack, can Jack directly change the address, no. We do not give direct access to these things, so I cannot give direct access to attribute. Jack cannot access the attributes directly. No. Can Jack deposit the amount, of course. Can Jack withdraw the amount? Of course. Can Jack have balance inquiry? Can Jack transfer the amount? Of course. Yes. So I can give direct access to the methods. Jack can directly access the method. But Jack cannot access the states directly or attributes directly. So I should give a restricted access to the object. So how do I achieve that? I achieve that with the help of access specifiers. So I want Jack to access the methods and I don't want Jack to access the state. So what I do is I keep state as private and I keep behavior or methods as public. So now I can say that I am giving 
uh, restricted access 